take a hymnal, page number 506. Grab your hymnal, 506, first and last. I will sing of my Redeemer as we stand. I will sing. that you know the Redeemer yeah. today. Right. What a glorious thing it is to be a child of God. Amen. Knowing, you know, that in this world, when you watch the news, listen, okay? When you watch the news and you listen from evening to evening or night to night, whenever you tune in and see the, uh, the craziness, the, the liberalness, the, uh, the denial of God and Christianity, yeah. the Bible, old time religion, anything righteous, anything moral, this world is getting farther and farther and farther away. And in the midst of it all, I'm glad we know the Redeemer. Amen. Amen. It's a wonderful thing. I'm going to say this because we have visitors here. It's a wonderful thing to be a child of God. I mean, it's a wonderful thing to have that peace that passes all understanding. All right, Brother Ivester, I want him to pray for us. This dear brother that's fixed to pray for us, he has a, um, and uh, we say it from time to time, but every morning, at about 4.30, 4 a.m., 5, most of the time in the area of 4, 4.30, he's doing a, a, a digital devotional, and he would be more than glad to put you on the list, and you'll give him your email. It'll come to you every morning. You don't have to get it at 4 o'clock. He's up with the chickens or the roosters or somebody, but you can get it at 7.30, 8 o'clock or 9, whenever you get up. But uh, it's a wonderful thing. I read them. They're a blessing. He's very diligent at it and uh, never misses unless he's sick or his wife and vice president takes over, and that's Miss Lisa, all right? She'll take over every now, every now and then she'll do one and does a great job. Brother Ivester, proud of you. Why don't you pray with us, please, sir? Let's pray. Father, we do love you this morning, and what a privilege it is to be in the house of God today. I'm glad to be here, and I'm, I'm glad I know the Redeemer this morning. I, Thank you, dear God, for this ministry. I just want to thank you for Sunday school. Lord, I thank you for what I heard this morning. Lord, that you are my lamb. And I thank you, dear God, that you shed your blood at Calvary and died for my sins. Lord, I don't have to pay for my sins. Lord, I could never pay for them. You've already paid the debt. It's paid in full. And I just want to thank you for that this morning. It's good to be around your house. Thank you again for Sunday school, Lord. We've come here to worship. I pray, God, that you'll just touch every heart in the building, every soul in the building. Lord, if there's a lost soul here today, God, let them know, Lord, that it could, they, they could change it today if they'll just trust in the blood of Jesus. I pray, God, you'll touch my pastor and, God, take any sickness out of his body. I pray, dear God, for Brother Reigns this morning. Pray you'll touch the man of God. Help him to preach. Father, we've come to worship your son this morning. Lord, we're nothing without you. I pray, God, you'll bless every song, bless every prayer, bless every word that's preached today. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. you. may be seated all over the building. What a great crowd we have. Although we have a good bit of sickness, people are texting and letting us know that they're not able to be with us. So glad to see Brother Good. God bless you, Brother Good. Glad you're here, able to feel like being here in the house of the Lord. And we want to take this opportunity, first of all, also to welcome uh, visitors here at Mountain View Baptist Church. We have a couple here in the middle, a lady and a husband on the left right here. I've got all your names back here in the back, but uh, we're glad you're here. We really are. They were here the other week and came back. What a, what a blessing, church. What a blessing. See people visit and then come back and visit again. 
I mean, you know, I kind of wish some of our members would do that. <laughs> I wish some of our members, Brother Rains, would do that. Visit again, all right? Well, they, they are, they are. But anyway, thank you for being here. And we'll be having service tonight at 6 p.m. Brother uh, Evangelist Jeff Jones will be preaching tonight. And Dr. Evangelist, uh, Brother Larry Rains will be preaching this morning. And we're looking forward to hearing Dr. Rains in just a little bit, all right? Let's have the ushers come on in. We'll get the regular tithe and the regular offering. And if you'll look at the bulletin, we've started a brand new outreach at 5 p.m. on Fridays. That is the Just Jesus Radio Network. Brother Cam is the overseer of that radio network. If you have any questions, concerns, or, or, or regards about that, you can ask him. But it's all, all, all you can get it on your phone, you can get it on your, you can get it on any device you have. It's internet-based radio. And it's going to listen, church, it's going around the world. It's going literally around the world. And so we're able to preach the gospel here in uh, Cowpens and Spartanburg, and that go out everywhere around the world, and people hear it. So we appreciate Brother Cam signing the church up and getting that going for us, all right? God bless you. The choir's going to sing you giving the tithes and offerings, all right? John Cutt, step up here, Brother John. Pray for us. Dedicate the offering. Look in the bulletin now. There's a lot of great announcements in there. We'll not take the time to go over every one of them, but there are everything going on in the church in the month of November, maybe even December. It's all in the bulletin if you'll read it. All right, Brother John, pray for us, please, sir. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful, Father, for your love, for your goodness, for your mercy. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the hour we've already had here in the house of God. Thank you, Lord, for the Sunday school teachers, Lord, for them preparing and having your word ready for us there. And we pray, God, that you'll just bless them in a mighty way. Pray, God, as we go into the preaching hour, Lord, you'll lift the man of God up. Lord, God, that you'll strengthen him. Help him, Lord, to preach what we need to hear, Lord. Help us to apply it to our hearts, our lives. Go out to be better Christians for you. And we pray, God, that you'll bless the offering. Use it for thy glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
take a hymn, let's turn to page 477. Let's do the first and the last of Stand Up for Jesus as the choir comes down on the last. Would you stand? Shake hands with our visitors, all right? Let's make them feel welcome today, okay, while the choir comes down. Our singers are getting ready, and uh, I do want to bring attention, although it's all in the bullets, and I want you to, because we have visitors here again, but uh, on, uh, on November the 23rd, that's, um, let's see, well, that's soon, all right? So uh, about, about nine or 10 days, November the 23rd, it's on a Tuesday evening, and we'll probably meet around seven, I guess, and it's over in our fellowship hall, over here across the road to school, cafeteria for all the visitors sake and we're having a special Tuesday night Thanksgiving supper and what that is is basically the best Thanksgiving breakfast this side of heaven all right I'm serious and they'll have everything and in, in, that we would want is going to be there and we want we want to make it an outreach we want to make it an outreach and so we're inviting inviting visitors and we want you to bring others maybe your neighbors invite them We'll have plenty of food. I know there's a lot of work goes into it, but uh, we have a wonderful time celebrating Thanksgiving with our church family that night. 
And then, of course, you have family, family Thanksgiving the day following. But uh, spread the word. You don't want to miss that Tuesday night, November the 23rd, all right? All right, y'all ready? Come on, Andrew and Mary Beth. God bless Andrew. Well, we got the whole crowd up here, okay? Andrew and Mary Beth and several others going to play for them. Good to have them in town. You worship with them while they sing, all right? We'll do this song here. We've done it a little while ago. Uh, it's one of my favorite songs, but I believe the Lord enjoys it. It's a call to you, our God, alone. And uh, we thank you for the prayers and everything. Uh, we've uh, been off the road since uh, a couple weeks ago. We actually had to quit because... Man, that's pretty bad. Um, we actually had to come off the road a little bit because we got sick. And then uh, but we're able to be here today. Good to be at home, church. And uh, hope to glorify the Lord in this song. <clears throat> You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. You God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. You're the only God who's None can contain. You're the only God whose name and praise will never end. You're the only God who's worthy of everything we can give. You are God. That's just the way it is. You are God alone from before time began. Appreciate the song, all right? All right, come on, Miss Herpel, if you will. Right before the preacher comes in just a little bit. Appreciate Brother John White being here. God bless you, Brother John. Appreciate seeing Brother Tommy Kirker. He's been pretty pretty sick. Glad he's better. And now Beverly's uh, here, but she's not been, been feeling quite as well either. Several on the prayer list. You remember them, all right? You ready, Miss Herpel? God bless you. Oh, 
God, and they tell me, and I don't know if it's, uh, well, it's, it probably is accurate, they tell me the last words of that song were found inscribed on the walls of an asylum somewhere that a man had scrolled in the plaster, the yeah. last word, Brother Rick, of that song, the love of God. And I'm telling you, if you're here today and you do not know the love of God, you don't know what you're missing, friend. You don't know what you're missing. Thank you for all the singing, all the playing, all the leading. Let's get our Bibles in our hand. So good to have Preacher Larry Rains with us again today. Mm -hmm. We just had him for the graduation, I'm um, not graduated, the dedication, the dedication of his uh, great grandson and brought him back this morning. I wasn't feeling quite well the past two days. I am better this morning, but I wasn't <coughs> sure if I could make it preaching, so I didn't want to start and start coughing. So we got this preacher and we're glad he's available. Give me undivided attention as Pastor Larry Rains, all right? Thank you, Preacher. We're going to be in Matthew's Gospel, Chapter 8. Matthew, Chapter 8. I'm glad I know the love of God. I have experienced it. I uh, led a man to the Lord years ago. Remember there at Pleasant View, uh, Joe Schultz led him on, led on uh, visitation one night, and uh, he came and got cancer working at the battery factory there in Greer, and. Uh, he asked Preacher Range to sing the love of God at his funeral. And uh, he started to get up and walk out when I started singing. But uh, <laughs> I'm not a singer. I'm a preacher. Amen. But uh, there's a message in that song. And if you hadn't experienced it, it's deeper than the sea, higher than the heavens, farther than the east is from the west. And it's unexplainable. But you can experience it. Amen. And I have experienced it, and uh, I appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. I asked your pastor, I said, Preacher, well, 
it won't offend me if you just go ahead and preach. So I love uh, your pastor and I love his family, but he said for me to go ahead, so I'm going to try to preach out of Matthew's gospel, chapter number eight. I looked through my notes and prayed, and my son came in last night, and then uh, I was in my study. He said, uh, what you doing? I said, trying to get ready for uh, in the morning. He said, you having a problem? I said, well, I'm trying to get settled on what to preach. And so he prayed for me, and I believe the Lord's directed me to Matthew chapter number 8. I was in this chapter in April of 2010. I preached here out of this chapter. All of you remember every word I said, don't you? <laughs> but I've got a burden on my heart, and I'm going to try to bring you. i got a five-minute introduction and a 20-minute message. And we'll be out here. It's Sister Chris's birthday. And we're going to have a birthday dinner for her, the Lord willing. And I said, if I get tied up, don't worry about me. Just go ahead and uh, celebrate the birthday. Because I come to get in and not to get out, didn't you? I was uh, preaching for my son here the, a few weeks ago, a few days ago. And uh, he had some new members. And I saw they pulled in in a nice uh, super duty biked it in the parking place. I said, I never have had any confidence in people that bike in their parking place. <laughs> they come to get out and not to get in. And they misunderstood me. <laughs> and I just kid with people I like, you know. If I don't kid with you, it's probably because I don't like you, but uh, I think they'll get over it, amen. Anyway, we're in Matthew's Gospel. I love being here. I love this church. I begin to think every time I come over here, I want to walk down Memories Lane, and I do, and clear back into the 60s, I think, and that's a long time, amen, but I love it. I remember the old building back over here. It was over there with some of you, and I appreciate your steadfastness, and I'm in Matthew's Gospel, and I can say a whole lot, and uh, you don't want to hear that. You come to hear the Bible. And you come to hear your pastor preach, but uh, uh, you pray, I'll try to pinch hit for him. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 8, and verse number 18. Matthew 8, 18. The Bible said, Now when Jesus saw the great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Now, you notice who said that. Uh, that was in verse number 19. There was a certain scribe said, I'll follow you whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus saith unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, Follow me. And let the dead bury their dead. And when he was entered into a ship, the disciples, his disciples followed him. I think they ought to, don't you? And they do. And behold, uh, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are you fearful? O ye of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? And when he was come to the other side, into the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might Pass by that way. We'll stop right for the sake of time. Would you ask him to help me? Father, I love you. Thank you for the Lord's day. Thank you for the Lord's house. Thank you, Father, for the Lord's people. And I thank you for this precious book that I have the privilege of reading from today. And I thank you for the Holy Ghost that's blessed our hearts today. And Lord, truly, we can leave now saying it's been good to have been in the house of God. Lord, the fellowship's been sweet, the singing's been heavenly, and we just enjoy the atmosphere. 
My Lord, it's come time to preach the Word of God, and I'm keenly aware that I need unction and power and liberty. So if you'll clothe me in my calling these next few minutes and use me to your honor and glory, Lord, somebody here probably hasn't experienced the love of God. They're not aware how much you love them, and I pray the preaching and the Holy Ghost would open their heart and their ears and their understanding. And Lord, they would come and receive the love of God into their life. We'll love you for it and thank you for all that you do. We ask it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. I'm interested uh, this morning, if you'll stay with me for a little while, I promise you I'm not going to preach all day. But verse number 18 the Bible said, when Jesus saw the great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart to the other side. I'm interested in that departure in verse number 18. And he said, where we're going to depart to is unto the other side. And I could give you a lot of illustration. We came through the airport in Atlanta the other night. And uh, they said, this uh, car is getting ready to depart. You better hold on. Hey, Amen. So uh, we're getting ready, the church is getting ready to depart. Amen. The old ship of Zion. Verse number uh, 28, the Bible said, and when he was come to the other side. So they depart in verse number 18, and they arrive at the other side in verse number 28. And uh, they did exactly uh, just like he said they were going to. Let's go uh, to the other side in verse 18. And they did arrive at the other side, but in between uh, point A and point B, there are several things that occurred and took place there. Now, if I was preaching prophetically, I would probably preach that Jesus is leaving the mother nature, the mother nation, uh, the nation of Israel, and he's getting into a ship, which I think is a picture of the bride of Christ, the old ship of Zion. And we know he came to his own, his own received him not, but to as many as received him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God. So I think the picture here is Jesus departing from the nation of Israel. They're on the sidetrack and have been for about 2,000 years. In this dispensation, the church age, Jesus is building a New Testament church. And we are the bride of Christ. What a wonderful dispensation this is to live in. Amen. And I believe there are seven dispensations in the Bible. Uh, Dr. Doodledigger thinks there's eight. They tried to teach that to some of the preacher boys out of the church. And uh, one of them came and asked me, and that's always good to go to your pastor. And he came and said, Pastor, they told me over the school or university that there are eight dispensations. And he went through the seven that I believe in, and they said after uh, the millennial reign, there's going to enter into eternity, and uh, that was the eighth dispensation. I said, son, uh, I've been to two or three county fairs, and I've uh, been around the block once or twice, but uh, eternity is not a dispensation. A dispensation is a period of time that God has given. There are seven of those in the scripture and we have been chosen to live in the church age and then there'll be the tribulation and then the millennial reign of Christ and then we'll enter into eternity and uh, that's not a dispensation. Eternity has no beginning, no ending and time will be no more is what the angel said in the revelation. But nevertheless, you have been chosen to live in the church age, and I don't have time to uh, discuss the planning of the church or when the church began. A lot of folks think it began with John the Baptist. I'm not going to argue with them. Some of them think uh, Jesus started while he was on earth, and some of the rest of us believe it was uh, birthed at Pentecost uh, when the Holy Ghost fell, and I don't have time to get into that. But we are in the church age this morning, and I want to preach to you for just a little while on why the old ship of Zion will never sink. Why the old ship of Zion will never sink. If I'm interpreting the scripture properly, and I think I am, I believe this ship is a picture of the church age or the church dispensation, and Jesus is in the midst of the church in the book of the Revelation, and the seven churches of Asia Minor are surrounding him, and he's in the midst, and he's in the midst of this boat, and uh, that's what I want to get to if the Lord will help me. The church is not on her way out of uh, far as existence, but she is on her 
way out of this world, and we're soon to go home to be with God. Amen. But I think personally the Lord has allowed us to live in the closing dispensation, the closing hours of the church age. We are nearing the shore. This thing is about wound up. You can go through church history, and I don't have time to get into all of this, and I'm not trying to impress you, but you can go through the seven churches in Revelation 2 and 3, and we have to be down to the closing verses of chapter number 3. After this, John heard the trump of God sound, was caught up into heaven in chapter number 4. I think that's a picture of the rapture. But in between that, like I'm reading in uh, Matthew chapter number 8, there's a lot of things going to occur. Now I'm going to say again why the old ship of Zion will never sink. There's never been a ship that's been built that didn't, in, uh, didn't expect to encounter storms. I think you would agree with that, amen. Every ship that's ever been built has encountered storms as far as I know. And uh, the old ship of Zion has her part and her share of the storm. And we're on board that ship, so we're going to have storms as well. I could relate a lot of storms in church history. The church has sailed through the bloody seas of the Reformation. Information. She sailed through the icebergs of the formalism when it was a form of godliness denying the power thereof. And today she is sailing through the waves of worldliness and they're trying to destroy and sink the old ship of Zion. But I've got good news to bring. That's why I say the church is not going down. We're going up and we're soon to go home to be with God. Amen. I'm glad for that. I could give you the history of the Titanic. I don't have time. That's usually my introduction. But uh, let me give you just a little bit. On April the 10th, 19 and 12, uh, they had christened a day or two before uh, the Titanic. She was uh, four city blocks long, 11 stories high, all the modern of that day, the safety equipment, everything. And when they christened her pastor, they broke the champagne and they said this, not even God can sink this ship. And she sailed out of the Southampton, England, and going to New York Harbor and in the, nor in the North Atlantic. About four days later, on the 14th of April, uh, she struck a massive iceberg and tore a gaping hole in the side of that hull. And the ship began to sink. Edward Smith was the captain of the Titanic, and they had radioed him and said, there are icebergs in, the, in your location, in your area. He said, nothing can sink this ship. We are going to New York Harbor. And about 2.30 a.m. on the 14th, she struck a massive iceberg, and they were dropped down to the bottom of that ocean after a long struggle and trying to upright and all of that. 2,229 people got on board the Titanic and they were only 713 of those survived so that means about 1,513 or so uh, perished in the cold waters of the North Atlantic here just a few years ago seemed like two or three might be six or eight there was one or two still survivor that had been on that boat and nevertheless neighbor that ship sank that they said was unsinkable but I'm here to bring good news we are on board a ship that is not never going to sink. Amen. If I had time, I could preach to you about shipwreck. Paul wrote to a young preacher by the name of Timothy, and he said, son, Alexander and Hymenaeus, if you got his name right, he said, they have made shipwreck of the ministry, their faith and different things in that chapter. He said, they have made shipwreck. And a lot of folks preach those men lost, but I'm telling you, you're not going to wreck a ship if you don't have it. Amen. And I think those men were saved but they made shipwreck of their ministry and they were, uh, didn't complete the course. Here's what the apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse number 6. He said my departure is at hand. I read about a departure in my text. My departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. Henceforth there I finished my course. Henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous 
judge shall give me at that day, not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. I could go on, but I don't have time. Do thy diligence, Demas has forsaken me, and on he could go. You can make shipwreck, but I'm telling you, you may shipwreck your family, you may shipwreck your ministry, but the church, the old ship of Zion, is not going to shipwreck. And I got about five reasons if I can get to it. I'm feeling kind of preachy, amen. Praise God, forget about the birthday party, forget about Eden, and let's go to church. Are you listening to the preacher? Why the old ship of Zion is never going to sink. I got about four or five things. If I can get to them, I'll close. But first of all, the ship of Zion is not going to sink because, let me put them together, because of her cost and her commission. Do you know what it costs? for us to be a part of the church, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ. The Bible said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, I still believe that, I still preach that. I believe Jesus takes a death for every man. And if you go to hell, it'll be because you rejected him. You'll step over the love of God and you'll trample the blood of Jesus under your feet and lift up your eyes in a crisis eternity. You have not been assigned. You have not been chosen to go to hell. Jesus loved you, died for you, and God gave his son that you might be saved by the grace of God. A lot of fat Baptists are forsaking that doctor, but I'm telling you, you're not going to take the gospel to the wrong address. It cost God his son, and it cost his son his life and his blood. Revelation said he washed us in his own blood. I could preach on how he laundered me, amen. But the Bible said the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Here's what I want to tell you this morning. Get on board the old ship of Zion and leave your past behind. Why don't you do that? Why don't you just join this crew, amen, and forget about yesterday and those things that are haunting you and following you and trying to destroy you. Praise God, I do not have a past. Back past December the 31st, 1966, I met the master in the free pardon of my sin, and you couldn't find a record if you wanted to. Some of us, somebody needs to do that this morning. You're haunted, you're haunted, you're haunted. There's still power in the blood, and the blood cleanses from all sin. I've got to hurry, but I don't want to. Amen. Paul is preaching in Acts chapter 20. I guess it's a preacher's fellowship of some kind. Uh, but in Acts chapter 20, verse number 28, Paul was talking to the elders of Ephesus, and he said, Brethren, take heed to yourself and to the church of God, which the Holy Ghost made you overseer to feed the church of God. Here's the clincher, which he purchased with his own blood. Amen. Life is in the blood. The blood is the most mysterious liquid on the face of this earth. And these ladies and nurses and doctors know more about it than I do. But I'll tell you one thing, your life is in your blood according to the book of Leviticus and so Jesus gave his blood, shed his blood I don't think he spilled it but he shed his blood that we might have his life the greatest trade I ever made is when I traded death for life and I traded my sin for his righteousness, that's why I've got eternal life, I've been washed in his blood I couldn't go to hell if I changed my mind, wanted to, and I ain't about to change my mind, amen. Jesus gave me his life. The Son of God became a son of man that we fallen sons of men might become sons of God. I'm telling you, it don't get any better than that. The old ship of Zion's not going to sink because of her cost. I read somewhere in uh, 19 and 12, the cost to build the Titanic was seven, if I remember correctly, seven and a half million dollars. Now, what would that be today? Some of you math, mathematicians and you fellas, I don't know the difference between uh, 
19 and 12 and 20, 22 nearly, but I'm telling you what kind of astronomical figure would it cost to build a ship like the Titanic today? It costs a lot of money. And it costs a lot for us to be redeemed. Are you listening to me? It costs God his son. It costs his son his blood. And it's a free gift of God. Didn't cost you a thing. That won't cost you a thing. All you have to do is believe in it and get on board the old ship of Zion. I'd like to sing you a verse or two, but I don't have time. Amen. I saw an old ship gently sailing, and the good captain called my name and said, get on board. I don't have time to give you my testimony, but I'm telling you, our, our home and our marriage that we just celebrated 60 years, it was hanging by a rotten sweet tater vine and just about to drop off into oblivion. But I'm telling you, Jesus passed by and said, live with a wallering in her own blood but Jesus came by and said get on board the old ship of Zion that's the best step I ever took that's the best trade I ever made that's the greatest decision I ever made or will ever make is letting God save my soul and he rescued me and put me on board the old ship of Zion I, I got saved in the church we got married in the church I was baptized in the church I tithed at the church. I'm faithful to the church. I love the church. I'm going to die in the church. I'm leaving this world when the church leaves. Are you listening to me? The old ship of Zion's not going to sink. It costs God his son to purchase her. The church of Zion, the old ship of Zion is not going to sink because of the commission. I don't have time to labor this point, but you know it. He told those disciples, Matthew 28, 18, he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. I got on in the departure and I'm getting off when we land on the shores of sweet delivered. Are you listening to the preacher? We have a commission, and that commission has not been fulfilled, and God always fulfills every promise he makes. And so she can't sink until we fulfill the great commission that he gave us. So she's still a selling. The cost and the commission. And then secondly this morning... The Bible tells him in uh, Hebrews 2.10, the captain and his capability. If you got your Bible open, the ship's not going to go down because Jesus is her captain. <laughs> Hebrews 2.10, he is the captain of our salvation. I jotted this down not, uh, last night. If I can find it in my notes, I usually get off track about half time. But uh, he uh, commanded them get in the ship, and go to the other side. So he's the captain. He can give the order, don't you think? But also, when they got afraid in the storm, he corrected them and said, Oh, ye of little faith, what you doing doubting? So he's the commander. He commands and he corrects. And if you're going to ride on his boat, you're going to have to learn to take some orders. He's still the commander and he still corrects us. The last whip when I got, I guess I was about 12 years old from my daddy. I had two or three fellers whip me. I was on the police force. <laughs> I don't have time to get into that aspect of my ministry. My dad gave me a whip when I was about 12 years old. I was out on the front of the church walking around on the church rails Peeping in, there's a block building, had little windows up about this big, up about 10, 8 feet high. And I was up on the church rail. I walked one or two in the Holy Ghost since then, but been a long time. But I was walking that church rail, peeping in the window. And I didn't know my daddy was down on the, in the holler, watching up where he could see the church. He gave the land to build a church on. Uh, lost, lost as Moody's goose and meaner than a junkyard dog, but he gave the church gave the property to build the church on. And I'm up there, Pastor, walking on that rail, waving at the girls. <laughs> I stepped up on the porch about 9:30 or something that night, and a big hairy hand reached out 
and grab me right there. My dad was a big fella. And he stripped that belt off, Brother Andy, and he started. And he blistered my blessed assurance <laughs> from the crown of my head down to the, my ankles. I mean, he brought the blood out of me. And I'm not suggesting you whip your kids like that. But I ain't never walked on another church realm, peep around in the window. He broke me, buddy. Are you listening to me? God corrects his children. I could give you, I can quote you Hebrews 12. I had time. I don't have time to mess with it. But uh, we had fathers of our flesh which corrected us. How much more till we just submit to the correction our heavenly father gives us? He corrected them in the midst of their storm. So I see he's the captain. He's still the head of the church. And I could get in a good fight right here, but he became the head of the church after his resurrection. The chief cornerstone. All right, just to chew on that a while, you boys that are in the Bible school. But he became the chief cornerstone, the head of the church after his resurrection. But I see the captain, and I see his capability. You're looking at your King James Bible. Look at the capabilities of our captain. The Bible said in verse 24, there arose a great tempest. Look at verse, the latter part of verse number 25. And his disciples came to him, awoke him, saying, Lord, save us. Watch that uppercase, lowercase O-R-D. You look for Jesus when you see that. Uppercase L, uppercase O-R-D. You look for the Father in those. And these three are one. I don't have time to preach on that. But he said, we perish. And he saith unto them, why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. You got a great storm in verse number 24, a great tempest, and you got a great God that they ran to, a great Savior, and as a result of that, there was a great calm. Notice his capability. He is capable of handling every problem you will ever have. Man, this born a woman, a few days and full of trouble, trouble, brother Job said in chapter 14. Job 5, 7, man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly up or light a fire and you'll see the sparks fly up. You're going to have problems and difficulties in this life. But God told them, preacher, to get into that boat and he knew the course that they were going to be taken and he knew that storm was going to occur. He's teaching them a lesson through their storms. I can take you to the 107th Psalm, verse number 7. He led them in the right way, talking about the wilderness. I got a message I preach. It don't take 40 years to preach it to, but uh, several of those places I use where he stopped and led them through the wilderness. Different things he was teaching them and different lessons they were to learn as a result of the way God led them. He's getting ready to leave this earth and go back to heaven and commit the church, not to the Catholic church or not to Pope Paul or anybody else, but he's commissioning that church to go into all the world with pastors and deacons and members and what as we have today. He's wanting that church to learn the lesson we're the instrument God is using today. That's what he's trying to teach these disciples. So I see his capability. He's leading them in the right way. And he calmed that storm. And they said, what manner of man is this? Even the winds and the seas obey him. Do you know chickens are still obeying the Lord? Roosters are still obeying the Lord? The animal kingdom still obeying the Lord? The vegetable kingdom still obeying the Lord? God's got a problem with me and you. We just don't want to obey. Now, I feel for pastors pastoring the day. You can hardly tell anybody anything. A lot of them, like I was when I was 17, I knew everything. Until I got away from home, started having to work, and put that Goodyear rubber on my own car, pay insurance and buy gas. And I learned I wasn't going to smoke guitars every time I took off. So you can learn a lot after you know everything, amen. The captain and his capability. That's the kind of, that's the kind of savior you have. He's bigger than any problem you got. 
And I don't want you to feel sorry for me. The last February of 19, 20, 21, 22, has been the worst, most difficult. Uh, erase that worse, all right? It's supposed to been the most probably misunderstanding and difficult era that me and Miss Raines have been through in our ministry. I don't want to discourage you, but it doesn't get better. Yeah. It gets difficult. Yeah. Evil men seducer are waxing worse and worse, deceiving yeah. and being deceived. I've got problems now I didn't have when I was 26 when I was saved by the grace of God. Right. But I still got a Savior that's capable yeah. of handling every difficulty I've ever had. Right. Lastly, this morning, I saw his. I saw the cost, and I saw the commission. She's alive and well. I saw the captain and his capability. She's alive and well. The church is. Now I want you to notice the cargo, and the companionship. What cargoes on there? It wasn't a schooner. It wasn't the McCamies, and I love the McCamies. I started to call Peg the other day. I had them at Pleasant View back in 71 before they were the McCamies. Yeah. Yeah. I took their first album that I knew of to WCKI Radio where I preach and played them on the radio. But nevertheless, I love them. But this is not a McCamey Christian cruise. <laughs> this is a battleship, brother. Yeah. It's not a recreation room. I mean, it's not the Viking line where you go about six or eight stores and you get on there and stay drunk for about two weeks and then don't know what your vacation was all about. That's no, we're in a battle. And this old ship's not gone down because Jesus in his prayer in John 17, he said, Father, all that thou hast given me, how many did he lose? I have lost none. You say, what about Judas? Judas had the nature, but he didn't in the, wasn't in the number. He never got on board. He tried to act the part, and he was a pretty good actor, and I don't have time to preach on Judas. But the cargo on that ship are the souls of men, women, boys, and girls, and he's never lost one. You think he's going to lose the whole load in one one? He's not, he hadn't lost any. He gave us eternal life and he said, let's go to the other side. Now you might have to batten down the hatch and get out the foul weather gear and hang on to the master's home, but you're not going to get off the boat. Are you listening to me? The cargo, and here, let me close with his companionship. What, who are those that are on board? It's his bride. Y'all been married two or three years, I know. We've been married 60. Y'all probably got about that many. That's 40, 49. That's a pretty good time. That's more than 49 days, amen. They're putting stones with threads on them where they just screw them in the ring. She gets ready to leave. She just backs them out and puts them in her pocket and leaves you with the hole. You ought to watch these women. I'm telling you, the South Carolina women's the worst kind. <laughs> Those souls on that boat is his bride. Yeah. I'm an old man. I'm 80 years old. Wow. But you would have to whip me if you mess with that wow. silver yeah. hat lady. Yeah. Yeah. That wouldn't be, you said, preach, that wouldn't be hard to do. That ain't the point. I'm not the man I used to be. But I tell you this, I love my bride. And Jesus loves his bride. Don't ever get over being the bride of Christ. Can I just get down to where we are? We were back up in West Virginia. My son, he said, Dad, what happened to you? Well, we were up in West Virginia, and uh, that's where I was raised. It's where dad beat the devil out of me, where I went to school and played ball. And uh, we went up there to a reunion, a community reunion, not a family reunion, community reunion. And we were going through the line and they were serving us. And this lady, 
year or two younger than me, she said, she told my wife, said, when we were young, she said, I'd get around him, I couldn't breathe. <laughs> she said, I just couldn't breathe when I got around him. Wow. And that sweet little thing I'm married to. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'll claw her eyes. Yeah. <laughs> We went to, it wasn't Lowe's, it's not Lowe's, what's that other, uh, Home Depot. Went to Home Depot, the refrigerator went out here a month ago, six weeks ago. So we're in uh, Home Depot looking for a refrigerator, and this lady, she's probably 75, she said, how old are you, sir? I said, 80. Look pretty good to be 80 to me, buddy. <laughs> Not like she'll be like a turkey in that freezer compartment of that <laughs> refrigerator. Now you girls control yourself, all right? <laughs> the relationship that I have with Jesus, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah, I told you, you're looking at one blessed man. Amen. Got a peace in my heart, passive Amen. understanding. Amen. I've been teaching Philippians for a year, studying Philippians for a year, and I tell you, it's just about changed my life. It's, it's kindled a fire in me. I wanted to preach out so bad this morning, I couldn't stand it, but the Lord told me to preach out of Matthew chapter number 8. But the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Yeah. Some of you are worried about the, this and worried about the other. You're getting heart trouble because of your mind. It starts here and gets into here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He said, do these things, I'm through. Praise Philippians 4, 8, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, hard to find. But if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Yeah, yeah. Every time I come over here, I think about the good times we've had, preacher. Every time I come over here, I think about the ministry of this church and the testimony you have. It just lets me walk down memories lane. I don't want to live there, but I like to visit. The old ship of Zion's not going to sink. She's alive and well. She's still got the wind of the Holy Ghost in her sails, and she's sailing on. We are going to arrive on the other side. Why don't you get on board with us? Some of you lost. Somebody's never been saved. Some of you need to get your family in a good Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. You say, well, I'm praying about it for next week. or Do it today. We're liable to set out of here, set sail out of here, and be home before dark. So, mind the, would you mind the Lord in the invitation, Pastor? I'm through. Brother Kyle will come. I reckon whatever you want to do, preacher. Thank you, Brother Kyle. Thank you, Brother. Thank you, Brother. Thank you say. Want everybody praying, please? Everybody praying. I'm serious. Heavenly Father, we sure love you, Lord. We thank you for the great message. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful servant of God that you've sent our way this morning. Lord, a friend, a, a mentor, Lord, a, a leader, an example all these years, so, so many years. Thank you for him. Lord, what truths he spoke this morning. And Lord, we know that there are people here, Lord, they've never got on board. They're lost. They're going to die and go to hell. I pray, God, today, right now, right now, the Holy Spirit would prick their heart. Right now, the Holy Spirit, Lord, would show them that they need to step out, come down here, let us take the Bible, help them to be saved and get on board the old ship of Zion. We thank you for all these that are on board. Bless the church of the living God. Bless the invitation. Do what needs to be done in this service. We'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're singing what number?